This is Five on Your Side at noon, focused on you. It is a weather impact day because we're expecting strong storms to pop later. These storms could bring high winds, possible hail, even an isolated tornado can't be ruled out. Thanks for being here at noon. I'm Kay Quinn. Heavy rain could be an issue too. Let's get right to meteorologist Jim Castillo in the Weather Impact Storm Center with more. Jim? Yes, and of course that frequent lightning. So all those are hazards that we'll be watching. Every hazard is on the table. Uh, right now it's pretty calm out there. Now we did have some showers and storms around this morning and a few light showers out there right now. But this is a look at St. Charles and we're starting to see some height to the clouds. So some storms are trying to build, but it's going to take its time doing so this afternoon. And right now, again, a few light showers out there anywhere from Jersey County into Lincoln County in Missouri. And then zooming in a little bit, you see a, a few showers also popping up around uh, uh, Warren County and Missouri and, and traveling to the east. So severe weather risk is there for today. Now this is for tomorrow morning. Uh, so we have that chance of showers and storms this afternoon. 4 to 8 p.m. is what we're watching for any storms that will be popping up during the afternoon or early evening. And then it looks like a bigger or larger cluster of showers and storms coming in later tonight after 10, 11 o'clock and all the way through about 4 a.m. So all hazards are on the table. Stay weather aware, have several ways to receive warnings. And let's check out that future cast. Here's later this afternoon. Not everybody will see a storm, but we'll watch these probably starting to bubble up. And then as we get into the overnight hours, watch that cluster to the north after midnight in most cases and coming right through the metro, something we'll really keep our eyes on. And I'll have another update for you coming up in just a few minutes, okay? All right, we'll see you then. Thank you, Jim. You can always get the latest weather impact forecast on the Five on Your Side app, ksdk.com, and on the Five Plus streaming app. Breaking news at noon. An arrest has been made in Southern California in connection with the accidental overdose death of Matthew Perry. You might remember an assistant found the actor dead in his home in October of last year. The Los Angeles County Medical Examiner's Office attributes his death to the acute effects of ketamine. That's an anesthetic with psychedelic properties. Police haven't released any further information. A news conference is planned for later today. Perry is best known for playing Chandler Bing on the sitcom Friends. Happening today, the Francis Howell School Board is expected to vote on a policy that would require students use the restroom that corresponds with the gender on their birth certificate. Some parents are concerned for their children who identify as trans or non-binary. District administrators say they have to look out for the entire student body. The policy would also require each school in the district to have at least one single-use unisex restroom and locker room. The board meeting starts at 6.30 tonight at the Francis Howell Administration Building. That is in O'Fallon. We are getting more information about the St. Louis Public School District's budget. The board released more details during the last school board meeting, and many people are concerned about a projected deficit. Five on your side, Laura Barcheski checked in with the teachers' union. On the surface, the St. Louis Public Schools budget situation has raised some concerns. The district is expected to wrap up fiscal year 2024 with a $17 million surplus, and they're projected to run about a $34 million deficit next year. We're certainly very early in the year. We've had very little revenues received. We spent very little money because we're just so early in the year. Chief Financial Officer Angie Banks says one of the biggest reasons for the deficit is the district's effort to have competitive salaries. They're spending $32 million to make that happen. Byron Clemens with the American Federation of Teachers says significant raises are key for recruitment and retention. We've worked for years and been underpaid. It's about time to treat us as the professionals we are. Banks says they have a plan deficit deficit for this year and next year. After that, they'll likely have to look at ways to balance the budget, which could mean different things like layoffs and downsizing. But Clemens says they're not worried right now and always want to be part of the solution. Once upon a time, there was talk of way layoffs, and that's how we came up with a strategy to freeze our salaries and have furloughs. But what's not part of those numbers is the fund balance, also known as the rainy day fund. Banks referred to it as the money in the bank, which they'll use to cover the deficit. That $231.7 million beginning balance is reduced by that 
$3 million deficit to an ending fund balance of that 197.4. Student registration is up, but they'll still need more families in the district. Banks says that would help the budget, but there are some other things that can also make a difference. I think that the district probably needs to be on a regular rhythm of issuing bonds so that we can have more consistency in the things that we want to achieve. That was Laura Barczewski reporting. Bank says they're also hoping to reduce the number of contractors in the district and bring those jobs in-house. Parents in the district are still concerned about how their kids will even get to school. More than 1,000 high school students will use public transportation starting Monday. Metro is allowing parents a free one-day pass this week to give families the opportunity for a test run. You can get one of those passes by calling 314-982-1406. Metro also released a how to ride video and flyer for students and parents. We have all of this information for you in the As Seen on TV section at KSDK.com. Ferguson police officer Travis Brown remains in a coma this afternoon. He suffered a severe brain injury after being hit during a protest outside the Ferguson Police Department Friday night. Today we have new video of the incident. Police released body camera footage. We will play some of it for you. We do want to warn you, the video is disturbing. Did they already take the gate? I saw somebody go across the street with the gate, so where they... Excuse me. You want to arrest, bro? Cut that way. Cut that way. Officer down. Officer down. Officer Brown's family is asking for donations to the Ferguson Police Department and Brown's GoFundMe. We have those links in the As Seen on TV section of KSDK.com. Also today, we've learned a sixth person has been arrested for grabbing another officer's weapon during that scuffle. New information about that plan to build a road in Arnold, displacing homeowners and businesses in the process. According to our partners at Leader Publications, the owners of the Water Tower Place Shopping Center have filed a lawsuit to stop the project. The proposed road would start at Highway 141. It's intended to connect the city's northern and southern retail districts. The shopping center is on Michigan Avenue off Jeffco Boulevard. Arnold officials say a large section of the property will need to be acquired. The lawsuit claims city officials acted in secret for the past three years. Tonight, the city council will be available to answer your questions about the buyouts. That meeting is set for 7 o'clock at the Arnold City Hall. Still ahead, children and tablets. The latest study showing why their time on devices should be limited. Plus, why Disney believes signing up for its streaming service is enough to shield it from lawsuits. 